Boa tarde a todos. Um prazer encontrá-los aqui nesta tarde agradável de terça-feira. O programa de pós-graduação em ciências farmacêuticas está realizando neste momento a terceira videoconferência. E é um prazer imenso encontrar vocês aqui. É, nessa tarde teremos, então, um encontro com o Paul Perseg e ele estará trazendo algumas informações relevantes quanto à química farmacêutica e à Covid-19. Quero, desde já, agradecer também à Univangélica e ao Nai que tem participado conosco desta videoconferência. É, então, quero agradecer ao Paul e desejar uma, uma boa apresentação para todos nós e, desde já, Agora, quem irá nos conduzir nesta videoconferência são os nossos professores e colaboradores do programa Hamilton e James. Então, uma boa tarde a todos, sejam bem-vindos. Boa tarde a todos. Eu convido a todos a esta videoconferência feita pelo programa de graduação de sobre as ciências It's a pleasure to have you all here, Professor Paul Parrish, uh, who will be talking about uh, relevant information, uh, pharmaceutical and uh, medicinal chemistry. I would like to thank Julia Angelica and the International Affairs Center uh, for making this possible. I'd like to thank Paul uh, and wish, wish you all a very good presentation uh, and to conduct this uh, This session, I would like to introduce professors Hamilton and James. É, quero dizer que é um grande prazer ter aqui o professor Paul, Paul Peris, de uma das mais antigas universidades da Europa, a Universidade de Perk, é uma das cidades acadêmicas da Hungria. O professor Paul já esteve duas vezes na União Evangélica, na primeira vez, ele deu uma conferência abrindo um simpósio que havíamos organizado, né, falando sobre inovação tecnológica. Na segunda vez, ele deu um curso voltado para química medicinal, mas voltado mais especificamente para uma química medicinal estrutural, que procura correlacionar a estrutura com as atividades. Esse essa foi a, o curso que ele deu. É a Universidade de Perkin, em português, né? Ela tem uma colaboração formal com a União Evangélica, né, tem uma, uma colaboração. O professor Paul tem ajudado em um programa, nós temos uma disciplina que está sendo ofertada parcialmente aqui na União Evangélica e parcialmente lá na Hungria. Né, seriam 40 horas aqui, 40 horas lá. Ele nos tem ajudado com esse programa, com esse curso, que é voltado para os alunos da área da saúde, mais especificamente da farmácia. Ele tem vários artigos publicados, são mais de 150 artigos internacionais indexados, um pesquisador experiente, e tem colaborado conosco aqui no programa de pós-graduação em ciências farmacêuticas. Então, quero desejar boa-vinda para ele, né, e desejar uma boa conferência, e para todos que estão ouvindo, é uma grande oportunidade de aspectos internacionais da pesquisa científica. Professor Paul, you are very welcome here. It's a great pleasure to have you over again here at the University at this time uh, in this conference. So uh, feel welcome here, and I hope you can give nice lecture, and we can still continue collaborating. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Can I? Can I ask? Tell some words to the participants, Hamilton. Can I can I tell some words to the participants? Yes, please. Uh, first of all, I do appreciate very much for this invitation. In particular, to Professor Martins, who is the head of the pharmacy program in Univ Evangelica. It's my pleasure to see you, uh, Professor. Uh, since, uh, unfortunately, I missed to meet you in my previous uh, 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 travel to, uh, uh, to Brazil, but uh, uh, it's my pleasure to, to see you uh, over this uh, 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 video conference. 
I also wish to thank uh, Professor Napolitano to to help in organizing this uh, this uh, uh, video conference and all the other colleagues who uh, participating in this. Since uh, you might know uh, that uh, in this uh, July we we started to organize a summer school on drug metabolism on the chemical aspect, uh, medical chemical aspect of drug meta metabolism, and we expected uh, several uh, students and participants uh, 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 of uh, this uh, uh, summer uh, school from Univ Evangelica. Unfortunately, the uh, the pandemic. Uh, 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 prevented us to uh, organize this summer school but I do hope that uh, next year we can we can do that and uh, it's a kind of uh, substitute I recommended this uh, lecture as a kind of substitute uh, this summer school and keep the uh, the uh, progression of the development of uh, between our universities and our faculties alive. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, you will find this topic interesting. I'm very open to discuss the details. I'm a pharmacist uh, with, with, with chemical background. I'm not a microbiologist, so I try to, to concentrate on the molecular aspect of, uh, of uh, this coronavirus infection and the possible treatments against the, the coronavirus inspections. Uh, which uh, might be interested for all the colleagues working on the pharmacy field, on the chemistry field, and all the related uh, fields which are approaching any uh, living uh, 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 issues from at, mole at the molecular level. So, but if you don't mind, I start now the lectures, and uh, if uh, there is no other comments, and uh, as uh, and I think when I when I uh, complete uh, two three slides, I uh, I have I will have a break, and uh, we can have a discussions uh, in Portuguese. Uh, unfortunately, my Portuguese is fairly beginner at the moment. Uh, however, I already have a book. <laughs> <laughs> I bought in I bought in Sao Paulo airport. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Can we go on? Uh, have yes. Okay. Yes, you can go. Yes, you can start. So as for the so as for the, the details, uh, uh, as you can see in the the first slide, uh, uh, I I put the I mean the second one. Uh, I put this uh, this second slide. For, uh, for the general information and I would recommend the, uh, uh, the home page this cover coronavirus uh, 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 home page which is uh, uh, which is American uh, uh, comparison of uh, and collection of the details the daily details of, of the person of the number of persons infected the number of uh, deaths uh, uh, collecting the data and uh, organizing the data from all over the world. So this is the map. I typically check uh, how the, the number of issues are reducing, increasing. Uh, the, the figures are, are, are very uh, depressive. So as far as I learned, for example, in the USA, uh, uh, 50,000 some people died in all together in the Vietnamese da, uh, war and now the deaths, the number of deaths in the US is uh, almost 70,000. So uh, this, these figures uh, or just to, just to see some, Ital some uh, European figures, almost 30,000 deaths in, uh, in, in uh, Italy as is, uh, is is very much unexpected and i think it it makes the topic very very important for all of us for the pharmacy students and the acting pharmacist in particular 
since the pharmacy students and the pharmacists are in the front line of the of the uh, health care uh, service they frequently meet with persons with patients so they are i think they should need some some very basic uh, information on on the on the global issue and the uh, of of this uh, pandemic if you go for further for the next the next slide uh, we can see that uh, that's another uh, uh, home page from which i uh, collected some data there are plenty of others that uh, unfortunately we are in the in the increase in the linear uh, phase of uh, increasing both the uh, the uh, the uh, identified uh, number of uh, persons infected and uh, the number of deaths uh, so I think uh, uh, we are we haven't reached the plateau uh, in in globally so we are we have to expect uh, even higher number of uh, of deaths and and cases so which uh, makes an urgent need uh, for prevention. And, uh, and there are other urgent need for, for curation of, of, of this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 disease, this infection. And if we can a little bit uh, uh, further uh, to the third <clears throat> uh, slide, just to tell some very basic, uh, probably very, uh, very uh, uh, common uh, feature of the viruses, there are very small parasites, and I just learned that uh, the number of different uh, uh, or, uh, issue living organisms, uh, I mean di different uh, 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 items, different uh, uh, gen gen genders, uh, are far, far the higher figures found among the viruses. So the highest number of living particles found among the viruses. There are more higher number of viruses than the rest of the living uh, organisms in, in all over the world. So we are, we are uh, surrounding uh, plenty of them. Fortunately, only a part of them can affect humans. However, the, uh, uh, the, the basic structure is uh, very much the same. They have an outer cover, which is called capsid, and sometimes a lipid envelope, and uh, they have uh, a nucleic acid uh, content, which could be ribonucleic acid or uh, deoxynucleic acids. And interestingly, some of them is also incorporates some enzymes it's not general some of them uh, contains ready-made proteins uh, however uh, uh, plenty of them does not have any and if if we can go further one more please you can see the size uh, the approximate size of these particles uh, maybe uh, you can see this uh, uh, this one micrometer stage, which is the size of the mitochondrium and the bacteria, and uh, if you compare it with the uh, the size of the of the of the flu vi virus, for example, it's for it uh, means that uh, it's uh, more approximately one order of magnitude smaller uh, uh, size than uh, the bacteria and the, and the mitochondria. So they are very tiny particles. However, uh, the variety, uh, I mean the, the range over which their size varies, is fairly bored. For, for example, here is the Ebola, this big one, you see, this is the Ebola virus, uh, which is much bigger than the smallest one. Uh, which is the pox virus for example on the on the bottom uh, right corner of, of of the picture so that's why so the size is 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 very important very tiny particles so they can uh, freely move and uh, and it means that uh, uh, 
that's why when we are uh, speaking and then we we are coughing a uh, plenty of of them uh, being a very light small particles are floating in the in the air for a fairly long period of time i think now we can have a discussion uh, 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 break uh, hamilton if you think okay okay uh uh, I think uh, so far, uh, Paul has, you know, uh, made reference uh, to the cases of to the cases of uh, uh, viral infection. You know, made reference to the scenario, uh, current scenario in the world, right? And he made mention of how important the issue of uh, the preventive measure, uh, treatment uh, so key. Uh, looking at uh, the kind of organism that the world is trying to combat right now. Uh, he made mention, he talked about the, you know, the structure, the size you know, of some of these viruses. And uh, as I actually started talking about the, the, uh, you know, capacity, you know, to uh, to to spread, you know, the 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 the, the strains, you know, the rate at which these uh, virus can, you know, uh, spread around the world and, you know, uh, contaminate uh, the space. So, uh, 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 next moment, so Prakinte, I want dúvida, perguntas, uh, voltado às uh, apresentações do Paulo até o momento, vocês uh, podem uh, uh, mandar essas perguntas, não sei se o Luiz já uh, achou algumas perguntas sobre essa questão uh, da uh, pandemia. Eu posso só fazer um comentário aqui, gente, só para é, o nosso, é. para quem está assistindo a live, <coughs> O Paul está organizando ela em alguns grupos de slides, e para evitarmos termos toda a apresentação e só nos últimos 15 minutos termos perguntas, qual que é a ideia? É que vamos fazer pequenos ciclos, e aí você pode fazer a sua pergunta, para aumentar a interatividade. Né? Ele fechou agora a parte da introdução. Se você tiver alguma pergunta, por favor, pode fazer. Pode fazer em português, tem o Luiz que está aqui ajudando a gente, ele está colocando as informações em português no chat. Você pode fazer a pergunta, ou em português ou em inglês, se você fizer em português, o Luiz vai colocá-la em inglês para o Paul, para a gente ter uma interatividade maior. Essa é a ideia, então o James agora abriu. Não sei se Luiz tem alguma pergunta aí, Luiz. Olá, pessoal, Amil. Nós não temos perguntas até agora, mas nós temos alguns comentários. Okay. Uh, Josana e uh, a minha irmã Inês, They all say that the numbers that Professor Paul mentions are, are impressive. Uh, and Wesley, he says that he thinks it's very interesting uh, that some virus, they have enzymes, such as the HIV. And that specific characteristic uh, allowed the development of AZT. Well, so far we've got some comments, not the questions, but some comments. So we can move on, and then the next break, maybe you'll have more questions. So okay. let's, let's continue. Well, we can, we can go on the fourth uh, slide. Okay. okay. So when we are talking about uh, uh, the, the simplest classification of viruses, we can simply divide them into based on their uh, kind of uh, genome, genomic material, which could be denucle uh, uh, deoxy uh, ribonucleic acid or ribonucleic uh, uh, acids. Uh, you know the, uh, the the distinction is a. Uh, is a simplification of them however it's still very useful since we know that uh, first of all the structure of dna is somewhat different from the structure of rna uh, however the biological function of the two is very much different 
So it means that, uh, as I meant, as I uh, showed in the previous slide, uh, the virus cannot can, cannot get alive only if they get into a cell. So since does not have its own machinery to replicate uh, the uh, the genome material, and it does not have its own machinery to synthesize all the proteins that are needed, glycoproteins and whatever, biological macromolecules, which are needed for its replication. So the virus can get into the host cells and using those molecules, which are incorporated into the, uh, the capsid, uh, uh, the virus can get alive inside uh, the host cell. Now, if we go further into the into the next uh, 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 slide, we can see a much uh, a much more sophisticated uh, classification of uh, uh, the viruses. So, based on this present day universally acknowledged uh, 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 classification, there are seven different classes of viruses based on uh, the genetic material they have. Uh, the first one on the left hand side, can you see the arrow? Uh, uh, no, no, you, I, you can't see my arrow. Uh, oh, okay. No, it's, so, no, it's so, mine. It's yeah, mine. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, the, in the first class uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, viruses, the viruses have double strand stranded denuclear uh, acid uh, that's the no, that's the uh, uh, the that's uh, structure shows the highest similarity uh, to our cells in which also we have uh, the double stranded denucleic acid however there are some number 2 in which uh, there is only a single stranded nucleo uh, uh, deoxynucleic acid which which needs uh, which needs a, 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 the uh, a double stranded synthesis of a double stranded DNA intermediate, which is necessary to synthesize a messenger RNA. The messenger RNA is the key uh, uh, mo molecule, the key macromolecule, which uh, in which is involved in synthesis, in building up the proteins and other macromolecules which are needed to reconstruction of the new viruses. So it means that these two kind of DNA viruses needs an enzyme with synthesizing R RNA, messenger RNA, and uh, afterwards the messenger RNA is available the protein synthesis and the reconstruction of the DNA can be started. The uh, the uh, the number four five uh, three four five. The class is number three four five uh, uh, viruses contain ribonucleic acids. The uh, uh, the ribonucleic acids uh, uh, can uh, can have two uh, two different uh, kinds in this respect. Namely, uh, their uh, structure is complement or non-complement with the DNA, which is responsible for synthesizing the uh, the proteins. So, if the uh, the, uh, uh, the the virus, uh, the RNA virus, contains a, a so-called plus uh, uh, single-strand RNA, that plus single-strand RNA is directly, and that's the class of the coronavirus. The coronavirus is uh, uh, falls into this category. So as soon as the virus gets in to the, uh, uh, to the cell, afterwards, uh, the, the, ribo the genome particles is, uh, get free. It's immediately based on, on, on this uh, RNA, this virus stored RNA, which can act as a messenger RNA in the host cell, the synthesis of the proteins can go on. If not, 
Uh, however, the other, uh, uh, the RNA with the other opposite sequence, the, uh, the number five, is uh, stored inside uh, the, uh, the, the, the complement RNA should be uh, uh, synthesized. So one RNA uh, uh, structure uh, based on that minus RNA structure, a plus RNA structure should be synthesized, managed by an enzyme. This is the RNA dependent RNA uh, polymerase. Uh, there are there there are plenty of uh, uh, interesting and strange names for those who did not study molecular biology. However, I hope these these pictures helps to understand. And there is the the third one in which double stranded RNA RNA is stored, uh, 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 which also contains the uh, the correct uh, 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 RNA uh, 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 structure, which is ready to start synthesizing the proteins and there is one very interesting class of uh, of viruses number six those are the so-called retroviruses which contains an rna a single stranded rna of the same polarity of the of, of the correct polarity however these retroviruses cannot use this RNA uh, as messenger RNA, and be, and that's why these uh, viruses synthesizing based on the under on this RNA structure, they are synthesizing a DNA intermediate, and based on this D DNA template, is synthesized a messenger RNA, and when this messenger RNA is ready. The, the protein synthesis can be started. So these are the the possibilities. I, you know, uh, this 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 description is a very very much simplification. However, this is the basis of any medicinal chemistry approach. Since uh, if we want to stop uh, the uh, the replication of the viruses these are the possible targets at which for which we can uh, we can synthesize we can uh, develop uh, uh, drugs uh, potential drugs to stop uh, uh, these pro uh, these programs this processing uh, break Hamilton. i i would I, recommend I, the, I would recommend the break James. Well, yeah, I think uh, we have about two uh, questions. Maybe, Luis, do you want to help with the question translation? Okay, so we have two questions right here. The first one uh, is about the, the distribution of the disease occurrence in, uh, in terms of uh, exploratory and predictive uh, models. What parameters uh, could we use to for the route of dispersion of uh, the COVID-19 virus? Two questions, Paul. That's okay. So the first question was, what is the approach? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. James, do you want to say something? Yeah, uh, I think, uh, uh, the the question the, trying to like understand um, the translation. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the I, I, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know the so you know the crucial point is the translations. I mean, I mean, not the translation. That's that's an, that has got another meaning in in uh, in uh, molecular biology. Yeah. But however, the transformation from the DNA to the RNA and yeah. vice versa, this is a very crucial point. In the forthcoming slides, I will show you uh, the particular enzymes and I will show you the particular uh, fittings uh, of uh, the nucle nucleic bases 
uh, which uh, is somewhat different between the case of RNAs and somewhat different from the DNAs. However, which is which is very important is the mo molecular machinery of this uh, uh, this uh, uh, transcription of DNA from RNA and RNA from from DNA. This is a very complicated molecular machinery. I honestly speaking, I have biology books, and hopefully James, you are a biologist. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, if, I the, the, if I have the chance, okay, I I would be very happy to have a discussion with you. Sure, However, sure. And mm -hmm. I simply do not, I do not honestly speaking, I do not understand all the details of this description. Since yeah. first of all, they have to combine, and afterwards they also have to separate the single stranded. So, yeah. uh, and, and you know, this is not a continuous synthesis. However, it's a fractional, fractional synthesis and, and I, I do not know the details. I just only know that there is an enzyme, uh, that the, the enzyme has got a structure, a, de a definite structure, somewhat different from virus to virus. And uh, uh, I know that if you target the enzyme, you have a chance to stop uh, this uh, transformation. Sure, uh, I think uh, uh, the the worry, the the question being uh, asked here yeah, really touches this aspect of yeah, understanding the roots, you know, uh, understanding the mechanistic details, which, like you have rightly said, is very very complex. Yeah. Uh, and that, to an extent, uh, uh, make it make it, the issue of its replication at this moment, you know, a little bit, um, it's, it's really difficult to be able to target, you know, a specific, um, uh, have a specific uh, uh, target, you know, that could be probably be effective for everything. You have mentioned different stages, you know, the transformation, you know, in fact, the capacity of the virus itself, you know, uh, to be able uh, uh, to continue to exist, you know, uh, even while, while, you know, floating around in the air, you know, its capacity to be able to uh, quickly transform itself, have access, you know, uh, and take over, you know, the uh, uh, mechan uh, mechanistic uh, pathway, you know, of the normal cell. Those are really kind of challenges, you know, a lot of people are still facing, you know, in trying to develop, you know, a new drug and which you're probably going to, you know, talk about any moment from now. So uh, there's another question here, uh, which is, uh, from Jose is trying to like uh, do how the great advance of uh, or the uh, high cases of coronavirus uh, in the Europe happened during the uh, 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 now <laughs> very long. I, I don't know. Uh, do uh, so the, the, the question is, the big advancement uh, of coronavirus in Europe was during the winter. Uh, yes. What can we expect for the winter in Brazil, which is about to start? I see. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so uh, this is epidemic, but a very interesting question. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yes, okay, so uh, you're right. Uh, uh, in Europe, the epidemic uh, broke out in north of Italy. Uh, in, in north of Italy, and uh, people says that uh, most of the people who were, were infected were in Switzerland on the ski resorts, so in, in, in cold uh, uh, places. 
However, a lot of them uh, have visited China or and, uh, and other South Asian countries. So these people came from China, went to Switzerland for the ski resort, and when they ba went back to Italy, they just simply spread the, the virus over. Uh, this happened to Austri a small Austrian village too, that uh, the ski, so in Europe, the ski resorts were the origin of the, of, of the, uh, of the infections. And afterwards, uh, they, they, they spread over in, in north, it, north of Italy. So to, to answer your questions, your particular question, I think the temperature, the outer, the outer temperature in this respect did not much affect uh, the spread of the virus infection. Uh, however, expertise says that uh, in in the in the uh, summer time, in we are I talking about Europe. Experts I say that summer time is not the most uh, uh, optimal uh, optimal conditions for the virus uh, uh, spreading uh, the virus infections because of the UV light. First of all, uh, that's that's one of the the killing. Uh, 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 force on the different surfaces and uh, however not the hot so the, uh, the the warm weather for 38 36 Celsius is does not uh, uh, kill the, uh, the viruses so so probably uh, the most important uh, uh, effect is the UV light which is uh, a killer uh, of the of, of the viruses and uh, ho however uh, we i mean the experts the epidemic uh, the, the microbiologist and the epidemiologist predict to low to get the number of infected persons lower in in summer times i don't know how this this prediction can be applied to brazil where the average temperature is definitely much higher than uh, than uh, that's in in Europe, and now you are entering the uh, you you are now in the in the dry season. So uh, actually, I think uh, uh, the uh, so how to say uh, the dry season is is not the uh, not the optimum optimal uh, uh, period concerning uh, the spreading uh, the virus, but you know the the figures show that in the in the big cities in in Brazil too, because of the very frequent and close uh, contacts, the virus is spreading uh, and and uh, and the number of infected persons is uh, is uh, increasing and increasing increasing so i think uh, the temp that the outermost temperature is not a very definite uh, 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 question from epidemiological point of view it was your question yeah okay. uh, yeah i think uh preventive uh, measure, you know, being put in place by the government, you know. Uh, in Europe, uh, uh, also, you know, don't just answer the question, some measures uh, which is in place right now. Uh, how do you evaluate, I don't know if you have been following this scenario uh, here in Brazil, uh, how do you uh, compare the behavior uh, of uh, people, you know, towards these uh, uh, preventive measures being put in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
again confidential <laughs> yes, but i can i can tell you uh, what we could what we learned from the experts yeah okay? here in europe so or better to say in in hungary in particular but it's very common uh, uh, thinking i think in, in in the european countries so after uh, uh, the breakout of the 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 recognition and the breakout of the epidemic that was very important mm -hmm. uh, so since the recognition in in north italy took some time uh, i think two weeks and over that two weeks uh, a, a lot of persons have infected since uh, uh, and and uh, afterwards they realized i mean the italians uh, realized and uh, and, uh, and other spanish uh, 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 realized that oops there are plenty of infected persons already in europe they made the decision all each European countries but Sweden that uh, they inter introduce very severe lockdowns sooner or later introduced very severe lockdowns to reduce the number of contacts uh, to reduce the number of contacts to to reduce the number of infected persons in in that way not to allow the number of infected persons so high which is higher than the maximum capacity of the clinical and the hospital uh, 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 service since you know uh, in in this respect there are two different uh, uh, two different uh, 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 details first of all how many ventilator is available nobody was prepared uh, to to, uh, to buy uh, so many ventilators that's one of the things and the other things how how high is the number of the persons healthy persons who are working in the hospitals so these two just to uh, and to uh, uh, to prevent the increase of the infected persons within a very short period of time they introduced the lockdown to make the number of infected persons from day to day to months to months uh, as low as possible this way uh, the, the the virus epidemic lasts definitely longer however uh, uh, the uh, the hospital uh, capacity always provides a safe uh, 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 numbers of, for those who need uh, very special treatments. So that's why the, uh, the European approach is, uh, I think, successful. In the meantime, plenty of ventilators uh, we started to manufacture plenty of masks uh, face masks were started to manufacture and in this case uh, the the interventions were successful to keep the number of persons low enough uh, there are some some two uh, no there are three uh, serious uh, differences unfortunately i do not know the brazilian situation however if we have time i'm 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 very interesting to to learn the swedish who did not introduce very lock uh, very uh, strict lockdown however they allowed the persons to move freely one immunologist one, uh, one professor of immunology a friend of mine suggested that they were very uh, high trust in the in the uh, sauna uh, since the sauna is uh, uh, keep the immune system very very active and effective uh, all over the year and the other problem uh, the other situation was in the uk and in the usa 
who had uh, who are who are facing very much the same situation that uh, uh, the northern part of Italy uh, 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 was facing. They recognize uh, the high number of uh, silent but infected persons too late, and that's why uh, uh, in a very short time the number of uh, infected persons increased and the hospital capacities were uh, unlimited. So uh, I think uh, these are the two approaches. Everybody can make decision, of course, which approach is the good ones and the better ones. Uh, I, I think, and I don't know what is the, uh, what is the case in Brazil, which approach yeah. Brazil uh, 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 voted for. Paul, oh, oh, thank you so much. Uh, in fact, we have a lot of questions <laughs> coming up here right now. Um, issue of number of uh, uh, respiratory gadgets, uh, number of um, health workers that are, you know, working in the hospital and things like that. Because we know this uh, uh, is a lot of body on the uh, uh, on the out system. You know, this is a global. Uh, uh, it's a global problem, you know, so looking, this kind of exchange is good, you know, uh, for both of our countries, you know, this is a time we know uh, this kind of gathering that will, will be coming up with uh, different kind of ideas, how, I mean, the best way uh, to flatten down this uh, uh, contamination or cases of this uh, diseases and probably, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, being able, until we're able to get a permanent solution, you know, which uh, we are very hopeful uh, uh, to, you know, get in not too long. So uh, before I go into other questions, maybe you should continue because I understand you are a medicinal chemist and yes, for us, that's the side, side of your, you know, Wonderful presentation, you know. You are you took all the general you know, information you know. around. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, Paul. Before your comment, let me say something. We we have a very nice break, a lot of questions, and that's the idea of this uh, conference here. Of uh, course. I just, I just want to let you know, Paul, that we put in the comment the Brazilian predictions of the spread of the virus here. So all the people that are watching can go online and see the Brazilian's predictions and then make any comment if they want. Uh, but now we are going to have just your comment from these last questions and then let's move on because of the time frame. Okay. Eu só estou comentando aqui, para quem está assistindo, é, que vai ser o último comentário dele nesse break que tivemos, muito ativo, muitas perguntas. Quero agradecer a todos pelas perguntas, são muito bem-vindas. Então, nós vamos só fazer esse último comentário do que o James colocou e pedir para o Paul, então, seguir adiante. Quanto à predição de como está essa pandemia no Brasil, tem um trabalho feito, que está publicado recentemente, até pedir para a Natasha colocá-lo, quem quiser ver para comparar o que ele tem comentado na Europa, nas condições climáticas da Europa, e o que tem acontecido aqui no Brasil, tem um, uma curva que está é, publicada nesse artigo, você pode comparar com a que o Paul colocou aqui, elas tratam do mesmo, do, dos mesmos princípios. Paul, so, it's your, it's your turn. Uh, just one more sentence. Yeah. Um, uh, I do not mind to derail the original topic and uh, continue this epidemiological discussion, I tell you why. Uh, since uh, <clears throat> we are university personnel, some of us is, uh, is, is a pharmacist. And you know, the persons, I mean, the, the man of the street, without, uh, 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 how to say, uh, well-founded, basis of the virus infections and the treat possible treatments of the virus infections and the possible spreading of the virus uh, contamination just go to the pharmacy ask the uh, ask the university personnel 
for your advice. And I think uh, uh, the sentences we tell uh, the persons who come in to the to the school, come in to the to the pharmacy, uh, 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 the friends, the uh, the families is very important. Since uh, you know, if they are uh, convinced that, uh, for example, they have to wear the mask because the virus are, are, are very small ones and uh, they get through the mask, you know, obviously uh, it, it could get through. So uh, if, if you wear the mask, it doesn't mean that you can approach the other in 10 centimeter, uh, 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 50 centimeter closeness since it, it gets some provision, uh, pro, uh, get some uh, uh, protection, but it doesn't mean that uh, if you wear the mask, you are fully protected. It's, it's not the case, you know? That, uh, so the other thing and uh, the, uh, the other aspects, which was very successful here in Europe, that the experts could convince the population that they have to, they, they should stay at home. They do. They they shouldn't. Uh, they they shouldn't visit the parents, the old parents, since maybe the young ones no symptoms at all. However, they are carrying the virus, and if they the, if these people uh, go and see the old parents, you know, and transfer the virus infection to them, without full knowledge of they are infected. The parents will get a very serious situation and these are very important questions for keeping the virus infection as low as possible and to protect the old ones you know since uh, the old ones i mean above 60 65 which are not really old but however the statistics says that uh, these are that those persons are are, are much more uh, 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 how to say uh, uh, develop much more uh, much more serious uh, uh, symptoms so those are the the persons who who should protect as as uh, as maximum as then as possible and you know this is a success here in europe since if you watch the tv and uh, see what's going on in in for example in north america those people are protecting against the lockdown it means that uh, they they do they haven't realized the importance of the lockdown. So, however, I'm obviously you know <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm very happy if I could continue. But these are I just wanted to tell you that I I fully uh, understand uh, the students who are asking uh, give uh, questions and and interesting what is the experience here in Europe and I, 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 I very much uh, 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 open to uh, such discussions since it is very important to save the population. Yes, thank you. Yes. So I think you can yes. probably we should proceed now to the next stage. Okay. A lot of yes. questions, people are more interested in the new drugs you know, billions of dollars is flying around for people to apply, you know, for grants. Uh, I'm quite sure Hamilton will be very glad to, you know, collaborate with you and probably some other people in the, you know, in the group. So that issue, that question already here, you know, on the aspect of therapeutics, maybe we should move into that. And if we have time later, we can you know, go into other things. Okay. okay. Do we have five more minutes, Hamilton? Do we have five more minutes? Yes, go ahead. Uh, go if ahead. you don't mind, okay, I wish, wish to ask you to go to, not the, ne the last one, however, close to the last uh, 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 slide. Okay. Uh, uh, a question, I'm sorry. Can we, can we contribute uh, this uh, lecture to those who Science is to be Okay, stop it. This one? No, back. Please step back. One more. 
One more. Yeah, yes, one more. No? Okay, go on. This one. Yeah. One, one more. Okay. And one more back. Okay. No, let's see the origin. Since uh, that's that's another interesting question. Uh, I, my recommendation, I see Natasha, Louise, and I don't know who else are attending this uh, uh, this course. My question, I very open to distribute the, uh, this uh, lecture among uh, all the participants of, of this meeting. Since we obviously do not have to discuss each slide in, in such a, a detailed way. However, I, I think you can, uh, you can give them a copy of, of, of this, uh, this lecture and uh, for further reference. Okay, okay. We can, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Okay. No. So let's see. So uh, in the in the reports nowadays are frequently referring to three kinds of coronaviruses, who human coronaviruses, since there are a plenty of uh, coronaviruses which affect birds and and uh, other animals. Fortunately, there is uh, there are only a limited number of coronaviruses which uh, uh, which found in humans. And you see, if you if you see this uh, uh, this chart, you can see that the first coronavirus epidemic bro was broken out in two thousand and two, uh, and that and that was the first one which caused so-called severe acute respiratory syndrome in China, uh, which uh, which uh, spread over to. To, to America, as far as I know, that was the uh, that was the first one. The second one, the second outbreak. Uh, here is the the chart. Uh, was the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which uh, appeared among those American surge soldiers who were serving for the Gulf War. Uh, and after they returned from the Gulf, uh, they they uh, started to suffer of uh, of this uh, 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 Middle East respiratory syndrome, which was uh, another coronavirus, which is a modification of kind of modification of the first one. However, this third one is a uh, is a very close. A modification of the first one and that's why the experts uh, uh, call this coronavirus is a uh, SRS COV2 uh, referring that uh, this uh, modified uh, coronavirus is uh, very close in in from genetic point of view uh, to that one uh, that uh, caused the first uh, 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 outbreak. Now, if we go further, if we can have a look at the next slide, you can see the basic structure of the coronavirus, which is uh, a very, uh, very, very well known from from the pictures. However, here are some. In very interesting parts of it. For example, here is the, the okay, the single stranded positive sense RNA is the nuclear uh, is the nucleic the genome. So it means this positive sense RNA, if you refer back to the uh, the classification, uh, is the RNA which immediately uh, it which is able to act as a messenger RNA. So as it escaped from the from the virus, it immediately uh, uh, operates as a messenger RNA, and in the host cell ribosomes on the surface of the host cell ribosomes, the uh, protein synthesis uh, it, it's starting. Uh, another uh, important uh, thing besides the RNA 
is this spike glycoprotein. Uh, this uh, this uh, spike glycoprotein is the with this with its characteristic shape. It is the site which uh, uh, is binds to a cell surface receptor, and uh, however. Uh, uh, the, uh, the binding to the self surface receptor, another uh, uh, enzyme is needed, also needed on the self surface, and that enzyme is a is a, a, a sarin protease type of enzyme, which is uh, which two are very densely expressed in the surface of the end of the lung endothelial cells so when these two uh, two uh, uh, two proteins i mean the ice uh, 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 target plus uh, the sarin protease enzyme is expressed nearby the, the cell surface the sarin protease cuts a small part of the protein of this S glycoprotein, kind of activated, and the activated uh, uh, glyco S glycoprotein is ready to bind to the receptor. So this is the, so that's why the mechanism is, is very important. So for example, one of the first tested uh, 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 drugs among among the very first tested drugs are those are the so-called sarin protease inhibitors since if you inhibit the sarin protease which modifies this spike glycoprotein it prevents the binding of the of the uh, uh, the virus to the cell surface receptor and protection of the bi inhibition of this binding just uh, just blocks the whole process since the virus itself can not get in to the host cells so it means that this is a this is a very particular feature of uh, how the can we can we go to the next uh, uh, slide oh uh, we have uh -huh. only five minutes, all right? More. Uh, how much? Five. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, so it means that uh, if we if we uh, stop this, uh, we can stop uh, the uh, the entry of the of, of the uh, uh, the uh, the virus, and if we stop the entry, we can stop the virus infection. And this is the very last, if you don't mind, for today. Uh, this is the very last, very uh, last uh, 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 picture of, of mine. So this is the nine consecutive, uh, six consecutive steps over which a virus infection is manifested in the host cell. So the first one is the attachment, and each each of uh, these steps is a possible target so for example we can see and that's why i demonstrated that you can you can uh, uh, prevent the attachment of, of the uh, the binding of the surface the entry is the second one there are different mechanism of uh, of uh, entry afterwards the uncoating uh, there are some drugs which can uh, get slow the uncoating uh, the viral nucleic acids, the replication, which is, uh, is two consec two parallel steps. First of all, replicate the genome. I mean, replicate the new RNA or the DNA uh, for the for the new uh, viruses, and translation of the genome to proteins and glycoproteins to to synthesize the enzymes which are needed to reconstruct the protein content of the new uh, uh, new viruses the assembly assembly of the new viruses 
and release them from the cell. So these are the possible targets. And uh, if you are not uh, very, uh, how to say, if you, are, if you have the interest and your colleagues are, will be kind enough to, to organize such a distance education possibility, in the next uh, lecture, I wish to show some, uh, wish to show uh, uh, solutions or and or approaches, uh, successful or, or not very successful approaches, how the entry can be uh, uh, stopped by drugs, how the replication can be stopped, how the assembly and how the, some cases, the release uh, can, which are the drugs which are used in different virus in, in uh, uh, virus uh, 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 infections uh, as as a possible drugs to uh, to inhibit these particular steps of the virus replication. And thank you. That was my <laughs> contribution for today. Thank you, Paul, for your nice talking. É, obrigado a todos, tivemos um momento bem, bem intenso, acho que o objetivo é esse, né, intensificar a discussão, tornar a interatividade mais intensa. Quero dizer para todos que na próxima terça, às 14 horas, vamos continuar. Bom, oh, I am announcing your next talking, next, next Tuesday. Next so, Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday. Então, eu gostaria de convidar a todos para nos acompanhar. Eu não sei se o James quer fazer algum comentário. Eu acho que 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 eu uh, well, you're trying to run away from being a biologist, but going through your lecture, you know, <laughs> I don't know if, if, if I'm going to, if I'm convinced that you are still a medicinal chemist. Uh, I think you are just probably trying to run away, you know, but yeah, this is a really great lecture, which we really appreciate. And we believe that the next, uh, uh presentation of yours uh will be able to you know help us to understand uh every other steps taken towards the development of uh, probably new drugs and uh uh uh, uh new way of combating the thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much it was my pleasure to share this knowledge with you and all the others who joined this uh, this lecture Absolutely, absolutely. We are honored to have you here. Eu quero agora passar a palavra para o José Luiz, que é o diretor da farmácia, ele vai fazer os comentários finais para o fechamento dessa live. José Luiz. Ok, Hamilton, muito obrigado. James, muito obrigado. Luiz, também muito obrigado por ter contribuído conosco nesse momento. Natasha, também quero estender o agradecimento e agradecer ao Paul por essa iniciativa de estar colaborando com o nosso programa. Como já foi dito, não é a primeira e não será a última vez. Então, quero agradecer a todos. Como já foi informado por Hamilton, na próxima semana estaremos aqui novamente para discutir outro